Has the United States finally caught up to Argentina? Well, no, but let's find out how close we are. Let's see, maybe in the youth level we're a little bit closer. In this video, we're going to evaluate players from the U24 level. So any player born in 1997 or after had made the cut for the two teams. We're going to have a very special guest here. I'm going to talk about him very soon. And in this video, we're going to do a player by player comparison of each position on a 4-2-3-1 formation. Each position will count as one point for the United States or Argentina. We'll have my score and then we'll have our guest's score. And our guest score is Fede. He is a great guy, great journalist, Argentinian. And he also works for Oh My Goal, creating content for them. And he also has his own YouTube channel for football manager content, mostly in Spanish, but worth a look. Also, go give him a follow on Twitter. Great guy. You guys are going to love him throughout the video. But look, I actually brought a secret weapon so we can beat him. It's Argentina's biggest fear. Fede doesn't know yet, but he's going to find out during the video. So before we start, make sure to hit the like button down below if you enjoy this type of content. Comment which nation we should do next, a player by player comparison. We've done several different ones with Germany, Jamaica, etc. So just leave it down below if you want us to do one in the future. And well, I guess let's start the episode. All right, Fede, it's time to start here. USA versus Argentina. First, let me just make it clear to everyone, we're playing a 4-2-3-1. That's the first thing to make it clear. Second thing, before anyone calls us out saying a player is missing or this or that, players born in 1997 or after made the cut before they didn't. So no one can bring that up. Fede, welcome to the channel. Hey, thanks for having me. And uh, as I introduced previously, Fede has a football manager channel as well. Twitter account worth a follow, especially if you speak Spanish, but if you don't follow anyway, right? And I love football manager, by the way, but let's get started with this, Fede. And we're going to start with the goalkeeper position. Each position is going to count as a point. We're going to have your score and my score. Who's your goalkeeper for the U24 Argentina and why did you pick him? I got Lautaro Morales. Uh, Lautaro is a goalkeeper for Lanús. Uh, mm -hmm. to, to make it clear to anyone, I think mainly this is a position that we're not really stopped in youth. And I think that's natural because I prefer uh, more experienced goalkeepers. And I think that's that's a trend in football in general. Um, from the youngest ones that we have, Morales to me is the most experienced one because he's playing for a team that, to give you some perspective, Lanús might be considered like a fifth or sixth team in importance currently in Argentina, not historically, but their form for the past few years in international cups and whatever, gets them to that level. Uh, Morales played the Sudamericana Cup last year. He had a good performance. He's a very good goalkeeper, good reflexes. He's just not top, top quality yet. Mm -hmm. So for the United States, I go with David Ochoa. And David Ochoa, this is his technique. He played one game last season because he's very young. He just turned 20. And this season is his first season in MLS with RSL been doing good pretty good goalkeeper he was in our olympic qualifying disaster that we didn't qualify he was pretty much our best player throughout the competition until our last match against honduras which he tried to play with his feet lost the ball honduras scored but um he's in and out of his feet sometimes he looks good at distribution sometimes he looks bad good shot stopper but for this one I'm going to start by giving the point to Argentina the first time because maybe in two years, David Ochoa will be better. Who knows? Like you said, Morales is not elite. But Morales has been playing for Lanús. Lanús is a team that is pretty damn good in Argentina, makes it to the Libertadores here and there. And he's more proven at this point. It, it has more to do with age than talent. If I would say potential, I'd probably give it to David Ochoa because I, I, I think Morales, we don't expect much from him. We expect a lot from Ochoa. So I'm going to give it to Argentina. Do you do the same right now? I agree. Yeah. Let's start 1-0 Argentina for both, for Filippo and for Fede. So now we're going to move to the fullbacks. Before we do center backs, let's do the fullbacks. And I'll start with the USA's right back. So the USA's right back is Virginio Dest, obviously from Barcelona. I had his time with Ajax, wasn't really playing much there, but moved to Barcelona last season, had a good season, very, very shaky on defense, not very reliable when it comes to defense, but the kid is 20. He can definitely improve on that. Super technical. Very good on offense. Couldn't improve his crossing ability, in my opinion. Uh, was with the United States in Nations League right now that we won a trophy, but he wasn't very good during Nations League. But in the friendlies before, he was pretty good. Show sparks. I like Serginho a lot, but there's a lot for him to work on. Who do you pick for Argentina? 
I picked my captain and the one that I had the doubt on because he said 1997 and he's born on January 1st of 1997, so he's good to go. I'm talking about Gonzalo Montiel. Gonzalo Montiel is the right back for River Plate, my team, a uh, homegrown product, and currently the right back for Argentina's uh, senior squad. Uh, Gonzalo, in my view, uh, he's one of the best right backs we've ever had, both at River and at Argentina. His potential is limitless, and I I love the guy very much. Like I cannot be. I mean, I'm trying to be very, very objective with him. And I think from an objective point of view, he's a proven right back, has played in two Copa Libertadores finals. He has played over 100 matches with River Plate. He's the first pick for the right back, both at River and Argentina. And he's been rumored for Europe. But I know, and maybe not, but I think this is where we start arguing and debating because I like and I rate Serginho a lot. I think he's a very good player with... A very good potential as well and he's playing for Barcelona and it's not easy to play for Barcelona specifically not in your first year but he's done pretty well to to my from my point of view but I also believe we're not talking about the Barcelona we're talking about Barcelona in transition under fire so if you do good you do good and if you do bad it's okay Barcelona in general are doing bad so if you ask me I'm, I'm staying with my pick. I think Gonzalo is better right now than Serginho, and time will tell who's better. So I, I'm very fair here at the channel, and I've watched Montiel play for Argentina in the qualifier recently. I watched him play for River Plate because they played Palmeiras. Many people in the channel know here I'm a Palmeiras fan. And right now, if Montiel was American, he would probably start in a right back. Right now, he would probably start over Serginho, or maybe we would move Serginho to the left back, because Serginho can also play left back and have Montiel and Serginho. Montiel is just much more established, more experienced, more reliable on defense. On offense, he supports very well, very good on offense. Maybe he's not as technical as Des, because Des is very sneaky. Des some, sometimes looks like those Brazilian players, sometimes on offense. So right now, yeah, I'm giving it to Montiel. Potential, just like I said for Troy, I think Des will be better than Montiel later on when push comes to shove. He'll improve on defense well enough. But right now, Montiel would start for the USA over Des. I'm 100% sure of that. I know their halter's tricky, but I'm giving this to Argentina, even though I don't like the sound of that. 2-0 Argentina. But guys, don't worry. We're going to come back and I have a secret weapon. I have a secret weapon. All right. Now, left back position. So I'm going to go with mine. I'm going to talk about him very quickly. I think you know him very well. He's Robinson, Anthony Robinson, that plays for Fulham. So he held his own pretty well in the Premier League. I thought he did fine. Fulham didn't do too well, but he did okay. He's also another fullback that on defense, it's not that he's bad on defending. When he's on the one-on-one -on -one situation, he's fine, but he's caught off position quite often. That's the problem. Very athletic, fairly technical. crossing ability, in my opinion, is pretty good. Better than Dest when it comes to crossing. So Anthony Robinson from Fulham. Fulham got relegated. I don't know if he's going to stay. There's rumors of him going here, there, and there. But even if he doesn't stay, he's proven in the championship he can play very well there. That's my pick. Anthony Robinson. Now, who do you pick for Argentina? I have Francisco Ortega from Bella Starfield. Uh, Ortega mm -hmm. is one of the many, many, many kids that uh, come from the Academy of Belles, which is a team that normally nurtures itself from homegrown product. We call it the Argentinian AX in a way that they mainly use their own players and he's coached by Gabriel Heinze as well. I think Ortega is uh, one of the best talents we have in a position where we normally don't have a lot of talent, which is the left back. Uh, he's played well in the Argentinian championship. He's, he's playing for the under 23 national team and he's playing the Sudamericana and the Copa Libertadores right now. He's very good in attack. He's a very apt defender, but he's more of a going forward uh, left back. And personally, from my football manager experience, Ortega is one of the best left backs that you can buy. Mm -hmm. So my pick for this one, actually, I'm going with Robinson for this one. And I'll, I'll give you my reason. I've seen a little bit of Ortega. I'm not going to lie. I don't watch Vélez that much. I do know about their academy with a lot of players they're putting out right now, including Thiago Almada. That's one of the top Argent Argentine prospects. But I'm going to give it to Robinson. And this is a tricky one for me. I don't know exactly who's better. But the Premier League is the toughest league in the world. I think we can agree on that. And Robinson showed he can play there. 
he can play there. I haven't seen much from uh, um, Ortega on the national team because you guys always play Tagliafico there, which is a pretty good left back. I like Tagliafico. At least I like him. I think he's pretty good for Ajax. Uh, so I'm going to go with Robinson. He's a proven player in the Premier League. I need to see more from Ortega. I agree with you for the right. same reasons, basically. Uh, Fulham wasn't good enough for the Premier League. They are an elevator team, you know, up and down. But Robinson, I know, and again, the football manager knowledge helps. I've mm -hmm. even called him up uh, for the U.S. men national team in a save in FM19. I'm very confident in him, I agree. Yeah, I think he, and AC Milan wanted him. There's teams in Premier League. So they've seen he can play there. So Ortega, maybe he can too, but we still need to see that. So now it's 2-1 for Argentina, and we're going to move to the center backs. And the first center back that we're going to go with is the right center back. So the center back that plays through the right side. For the USA, I'm going to give mine very quickly. I know you told me before I talk, talked to you about this player, he, you haven't really watched him. So you have more of a broad opinion on him, more maybe football manager based. Um, Chris Richards, uh, he belongs to Bayern Munich. He's been loaned out to Hoffenheim. We don't know where he's going to be next season, if he'll be back at Bayern, if he'll be loaned out again. He's a pretty good center back, good pace, very fast, tall. Uh, one thing that's very impressive from him is this. He can play with both feet. He's as good with his left and his right. That's a skill that's very underrated in, in soccer or football. Um, and he, he can play as a fullback as well. On the three defender formation, he can play as a right center back, central or left. I rate him very highly. He's very good. And he's proven he can play in Bundesliga. So he's a top center back in CONCACAF for sure. Who's your pick for Argentina? Well, as you said, this is a mismatch. We talked before about it and yeah. it's obvious, but it's going to happen and it's going to happen later on. I'm talking about Cuti Romero. Uh, Romero has been voted the best defender in Serie A. Not the best young defender, not the best growing defender, the best defender in the, a league and a country that rates uh, defenders very highly. Romero has finally gotten his call up to the, to the senior national team in this last round of... Uh, qualifying for the World Cup and now for the Copa America. He's been the best player in the first match against Chile and he scored his first goal against Colombia. Cuti Romero is finally here and I think he's here to stay. Yeah, this one is an easy pick. I love Chris Richards and his potential is very high, but Romero might even have a higher potential than Chris Richards right here. He might win on both. I watched Atalanta quite a bit, actually, because I had them to win the Serie A. I thought they would win. I like Romero. Um, I like the, the way they play three in the back, the, the right wing, the right and left wing back. Luis Muriel and Zapata up top. They used to have Papu Gomez. They sold him to, to Sevilla yeah. be, because of the issues with the manager. But I liked watching Atalanta. I watched him. He's brilliant. And, and he's linked to Manchester United, Arsenal, Liverpool. So, yeah, this is a mismatch for Chris Richards. As good as Chris Richards is, the only way Chris Richards can match with Romero one day is if he becomes a Bayern Munich center back. If he starts for Bayern, then we can start talking about it. Right now, we have to give it to Romero. 3-1 for Argentina. I'm going to bring my secret weapon. You know what? I'm just going to bring my secret weapon. I need to put the secret weapon on. We need to come back, United States. And if the United States is not working, I need to bring what Argentina fears the most. <laughs> All right, so let's see if the Brazil jersey helps me here. Okay, now let's go to the left center back position. So, let, go first. Who would you pick for Argentina? I'm very glad because one of the uh, biggest problems that we had with Argentina since ever and with Argentinian teams is that we're so focused on attack that defense always comes like, you know, those chores that you don't want to do. Mm -hmm. And in it, in terms, it turns to uh, having a lack of very, very good defenders, especially the past 10 years. But this time, especially with the young players, we have ample quality for center backs, especially. Uh, we've already talked about Cuti Romero. And for the left center back position, I had two young Argentinians, very promising, already playing in the Eredivisie in Holland. It was between uh, Senesi and Lisandro Martinez, but I'm going with Senesi. Uh, Senesi played for San Lorenzo with a lot of personality in a team that needs a lot of personality. One of the top five teams in Argentina historically. Uh, he won that position, never let it go. Senesi is very good with playing the ball out, like from the back forward. He can ping 40 yard balls easily, and he's very confident uh, tackling as well. He's been one of the top defenders in the Dutch Eredivisie for Feyenoord. And I don't know why we're playing Otamendi ahead of him, to be honest. 
Yeah, uh, that's that's Argentina's problem. That's Argentina's problem. But yeah, I haven't watched him play. I haven't watched him play. I try to do some research on him. Feyenoord is a great team in the Dutch league, and he's been good there. His market value is 22 million, which is pretty high. Now, for the United States, and this, again, this might be a mismatch as well. Potential-wise, I think actually that my pick might be similar. Mark McKenzie is my pick. He played for the Philadelphia Union. To me, he was the best defender in MLS, even though someone else won it, Walker Zimmerman. But Mark McKenzie, to me, was the best defender in MLS. He can also play both feet. Now in Nations League, he was a little shaky against Mexico in the beginning of the game, but he bounced back in the second half. That was very impressive to me to see a 22-year-old, 21 maybe, actually. I don't know how, Mark, how old Mark is. Uh, he, he gave a goal away to Tecatito for Mexico. So that would put down a young player, but he came back and he rose in the second half, did amazing. But right now, because he hasn't established himself at Genk, the Belgium league yet, he still needs to establish. I need to give it to Senezi right now because he's established himself in the Dutch league. The Dutch league is better than the Belgium league. He's established himself. That is one. Maybe he'll make a move. Mark needs to do a little bit more. Maybe in a year or two, we can change our minds. But right now, I have to give it to Senezi at this moment. Yeah, so, I agree with you. And this is something that I think will happen. And it's natural that, that it's going to happen because the way talent goes in Argentina and South America is that we are putting players to play in very important matches like Copa Libertadores for our local teams at a very young age. So by the time they are 20 years old, they are already equipped to go to a foreign league in Europe or the MLS or whatever, but they already have between 50 to 100 good matches under their belt. And with the American talent, which is young, I mean, as a footballing nation, uh, the US is a, is a young and promising yeah. uh, uh, nation. And the way they are doing now in Europe is very different to the way we do it in South America. But once the American talent gets to Europe, especially when they get to the Bundesliga and all the leagues that are, that are starting to pick up on that trend, uh, they are proving themselves. So I think it's natural, you know? Yeah. We'll see, about, we'll see about these guys, Mark and Chris Richard. Like we said, Argentina wins in the center backs here, but we'll see. And, and again, Chris Richards win against Romero, which is one of the best center backs, soon to be one of the best in the world in the next two, three years or so. Now, time for America to come back. Let's go to the midfield. You're not going to win this one. Let me start with our holding midfielder, our six. I'm going with Tyler Adams from RB Leipzig. Fantastic player, provides great protection in the back line, connects the ball very quick, presses very well. Versatile, can play right wing back. Leipzig is the second best team in Bundesliga, and he became a starter. Uh, Nagelsmann would start him at the right wing back. He would start him sometimes more as a 6-8, a more defensive 8 at times in the midfield. And now we got Jesse Marsh at Leipzig that will play Tyler Adams even more. And we saw in this camp right now in Nations League the importance of Tyler Adams for the USA. So give me your pick for Argentina, and I'm, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with Tyler Adams too. I'm familiar with Tyler Adams. Are we talking from the two uh, central midfielders? Are we talking the right-sided one or the left-sided one? Whoever's more defensive. More defensive, then we're talking about Nico Dominguez. Mm -hmm. Nico Dominguez is another kid that uh, comes out from Vélez and is already at Europe playing in the Serie A for Bologna. He's established himself there. Uh, he's already played over 30 matches with Bologna and done so in a very good manner. He's in the uh, senior squad for Argentina. Uh, he's very good on the ball and very aggressive to get the ball back. Um, and if I'm being honest, I like Nico a lot. I'm not sure who should win it. I think Leipzig overall is a far better team than Bologna. I think Nagelsmann is a far better coach. No disrespect to Bologna's coach. Uh, I think Jesse Marsh is very good. I think everyone at the Red Bull like system is up to the task and doing their job very, very well. So that basically the structure of that makes me believe Tyler Adams is better or comes out on top of this. Uh... I would I would agree with you and give you give the point to Tyler as well. It goes back to what we were saying about all of them. When when we're when you're in doubt of who to choose, you got to look who's playing at a higher level club or or even league. I think Bundesliga is a little bit above the Serie A nowadays because the Serie A back in the 2000s was was a, absolutely fantastic. When AC Milan, Inter Milan, Juventus, Fiorentina, Roma, all of them were top teams. Uh, Napoli, Lazio, all of them. So I'm giving it to Tyler. I think Ty I personally think Tyler is a better player. I think he's a better player, along with being in a better team too. 
And we're about to see this season probably the best of Tyler Adams with Jesse Marsh, which was the player that brought him up from the New York Red Bull system, was his first coach there. So uh, I'm giving it to Tyler, and I think you gave it to Tyler Adams as well, right? Yeah. So right now, the score is 4-2 for Argentina. 4-2. Now, the other central midfield position. Let, I'll let you start. Yeah, one of my favorite players, to be honest, uh, Exe Palacios. Ezequiel Palacios uh, comes from River Plate. Again, one of the fantastic players that Gachardo picked from our academy. Uh, I saw the guy play his first ever match and I saw him on the field and I wasn't impressed. And six months later, he was the rock in the midfield. He was super creative, uh, a fantastic box-to-box -box midfielder. Uh, played two Copa Libertadores finals, and since he's gone, we had a hard time reconfiguring our midfield. He's player for Bayern Leverkusen now, even though he's had, as usual, Leverkusen tends to get all the best players from River Plate and sit them out for six months and then realize they should be in the starting eleven. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> when half the season is gone, ah, yeah, ex that that kid is good. So he's there, uh, and he's playing for the Argentine national team, and he's doing very, very, very good. Yeah, I like Palacio. I haven't watched him at Leverkusen, to be honest. I haven't watched him. I know he was injured most of the season, uh, but I watched him in River Plate. Very good. And my pick for the USA is Weston McKinney. And Weston impressed us all from breaking. We didn't expect him to come to Juventus and have an impact right away, but he did. He had an impact. He was their highest goal score. Goal scoring to assist ratio, I think, in the midfield, he was the highest one in Juventus. Uh, U.S. men's national team against Mexico that we just won Nations League. He was a beast in the midfield, defending, attacking, scored a goal, was winning everything in the air, was dangerous on set pieces. He covers a lot of ground, too. Now, I don't think he's as technical as Palacios and doesn't distribute the game or as creative as Palacios. But when it comes to box-to-box -box midfielder, I think he's a bigger goal-scoring threat. He covers more field. And I, was, I can't even say Juventus is playing as a, at a higher level than Bayer Leverkusen. Juventus hasn't been good. So I would say in a club level, they're somewhat similar. And Weston also proved himself at Schalke last season. I'm giving this one to Weston. I just think Weston as a box-to-box. -box, I like a box-to-box -box midfielder that scores more and covers more ground. Now, if you pick Palacios, I wouldn't be opposed to it. He's more technical than Weston. You know, it's it's very tough to me because uh, I think they are very, very uh, equal on the paper. And to me personally, I, I rate Exe a lot uh, for the fact that he came from my team and he represents River Plate. Uh, I think, as you said, at club level, it's very, very even. But I like Weston McKinney a lot. I like mm -hmm. him. I'm going with him for this one. Yeah, this is a this is one of those that it's more of a it's even a preference. It, it's do you want a box to box that covers more ground and is more physical and no score goals in the box, or do you want a guy like Ezekiel Palacios that's much more technical in the midfield, can cover a lot of ground too, but is more technical than Weston. Uh, I just I just really like Weston McKinney. I think every every midfield needs a dog, a guy that comes in biting and and and, and Weston brings that to the team. So so four three Argentina, four three Argentina. Now that we finished the midfield, we're going to the forwards. So in the forwards, guys, we're going to have two wingers, one attacking midfielder, a 10, and we're going to have a center forward. Let's just start with the right winger. Who's your right winger? Julian Alvarez. Julian Alvarez. River Plate, yeah, of course. Uh, people are going to think I'm just picking River Plate players, but that's just the history of Argentinian football, you know? Uh, we're the team that gives more players to the national team, and we're the, the team uh, from South America that's given more players to World Cups as it is. Uh, we're the team of Alfredo Di Stefano, we're the team of Ariel Ortega, of Pablo Aymar, of Javier Saviola, and we're the team of Julian Alvarez. Alvarez is one of our latest gems. He's been added for the past three seasons in and out of the first team. Now he's completely into the first team. To, to give you an idea, in the 2018 Copa Libertadores final played at the Bernabeu against Boca that we won, uh, Juli was there and he played for the final 30 minutes. And he was only 18 years old. He's a right winger that can play as a number nine, as a number 10, as a, you know, he can drop, he can go forward, he can score amazing goals. And he's doing it so well and so often that he's been called up to the national team and already has had his debut for Argentina, the senior one, I mean. 
Yeah, so my pick for the right wing in the U.S. men's national team is Timothy Weah, the, the son of George Weah, legendary George Weah. And Tim Weah is pretty good. He didn't really start for Lille this season. They won the French League, surprisingly. And Weah Nations League was also pretty good. I liked what I saw from him. He's a good player, very good player, dangerous cross. He likes to put in low crosses. He's technical, athletic. Um, I like Tim Weah a lot. But uh, the thing with Alvarez, um, did I say it correctly? Alvarez? How do you say it again? I like how you say it. Yeah. Julian Alvarez. Julian Alvarez. So I, I I saw him play in the Libertadores. I said, this guy is dangerous. Dangerous player up top and very young. And I think a lot of the times our American viewers will think, oh, European League and all that. And they don't, sometimes people don't understand how hard it is for a young player to play in the Libertadores. They don't understand. We talk about CONCACAF. Libertadores is as, it's like CONCACAF, physical, fighting, but there's so many technical players. Something CONCACAF lacks. lacks. There's not that many technical players unless you go maybe some of the Mexican players um, and the United States as well. But I'm talking about CONCACAF Champions League. The CONCACAF Champions League is Libertadores, but nowhere near as technical. And we can even go to the past. Mexico always wins the CONCACAF Champions League. Remember when Liga MX players used to play, sorry, Liga MX clubs used to play in Libertadores? They couldn't win. They never won. They played, I think, 18 seasons. They never won. And this guy is doing it in Libertadores, uh, played last season to the semifinal already, played in the final, I believe. Um, like two finals already, and he's two 20, finals. 20 years old. Yeah. So many will say, why can't? Why won't you pick Tim Weah? He won the, well, Tim Weah doesn't start for Lee. He doesn't start. Alvarez starts for River Plate. He's in the Argentinian national team as well. And he's playing Libertadores. I'm, I, I'm going to give it to Alvarez for this one. Yeah, to me, it's a no-brainer, really. I, I like Tim. I think he's a good player and of course, you know, I'm old, I'm 34 years old. I even got to watch some of the original Wea uh, playing for AC Milan and he was, he was incredible. He was the African Ronaldo. Um, I got to watch Wea playing for Milan and when I heard, you know, it's this thing, we're starting to watch this, the sons and like the descendants of all these great players I, I watched as a kid. And you're always like keeping an eye peeled for last names like that. You see someone named Chor, uh, Tim Wea, and it's like, okay, I'm gonna watch this kid. I think he's pretty good. I think he's got the um, the skills. I think PSG was not a, a great choice to start yeah. his footballing career. It's, it's not a team that that has patience and can give time to youngsters unless they're Mbappe and they're producing every single weekend. Uh, I think. He's got very, very good potential, but I also know, and I don't think I know, Juli Alvarez is already a level up from him. And I know Juli Alvarez is going to take the points to Europe in no time and possibly to a big team. Oh, yeah. I think what happens is Juli Alvarez wouldn't start for the US, I think, not because of Tim Weah, because who plays in our right wing is Giovanni Reina. So I think we would play Gio Reina over him. But I, I do think Julie Alvarez is better than Tim Wei. I think he has more potential than Tim Wei as well. Many of my viewers might get angry at me at this, but look, guys, look. Go watch River Plate. Go watch the Libertadores. Go watch that, and you'll understand what I'm saying. So, and by no means this is a diss on Tim Wei. I think Tim Wei can still be a brilliant player. And we'll see. We'll see over time. Potential wise, this can change in a year or two. Tim Wei breaks into the Leeds squad, we change our mind. Tim Wei hasn't been starting. That's the thing. And he doesn't start for the US either. That's another thing. Okay, now let's go to... So right now the score is 5-3 for Argentina. Okay, it's 5-3 for Argentina. So attacking midfielder, central attacking... So the 10, the 10, the classic 10 where Argentina had Diego Maradona, Brazil had Ronaldinho, oh, the Napoli jersey, I see it. That's Napoli, yeah. Um, so Diego Maradona, uh, Pele, even though Pele was more forward, Ronaldinho was there. So Brazil and Argentina, when it comes to 10s, that's what they got, Lionel Messi now. But the United States right now, for R10, I have Giovanni Reina, son of Claudio Reina, which was also a very, very good American player, one of the most technical American players I've seen. And Giovanni Reina is killing it. First season at Dortmund, and he already had, I believe, six or seven goals, five assists, was doing it uh, very well on the field. Uh, obviously, ups and downs. The kid is 18 only. He came into Nations League, and he was our best player in Nations League. I have no questions in regards to that. The kid was balling. It was amazing to see. So technical, creative. When he plays central, he's a different player. Uh, very good set piece taker as well. And now you're going to go to your pick, which I know who it is. And I, I, I rate him very highly. It's going to be hard to pick this one. I already have my pick, but go ahead with yours. 
Yeah, yeah, like you said, number 10s are Finn, uh, Juan Roman Riquelme, Pablo Aymar, you name them. Um, but I'm going with Thiago Almada. Uh, we have several number 10s. I could have named Alexis McAllister, I could have named Barco, even, or Monito Vargas, who plays for Espanol. But I'm going with Thiago Almada. Again, a Bella Starfield kid. So if you've never watched Argentinian football, you should take a look at Bella Starfield. I'm talking to your viewers. Yeah. Um, Thiago is the archetypical number 10 for Argentina. A very small guy, very gifted, a dribbler, a guy that can shoot with both feet. He can take free kicks. He can do basically everything. He's a creative type of player, a very selfish type of player as well. And very young and very fast. Uh, he's established himself as a key figure for Bell Starfield in uh, the domestic competitions and the South American competitions. He is the number 10 for our Olympic squad that will play the Olympic Games uh, in our under 23. And he's taking up, especially with the preparation games that we're playing right now, uh, he's taking up on that role of being the main guy that asks for the ball and directs the play. He's also heavily rumored with a move abroad. Uh, they say Barcelona want him, both Manchester's want uh, a piece of Thiago, but it's looking more likely that he'll go to Olympique uh, in Marseille, which is mm -hmm. the team of Jorge Sampaoli. If I gotta talk about the pick, I think Thiago's potential is very, very high, but he hasn't proven himself. And I've seen this story many times before with Argentina number 10s. I've seen mm -hmm. a lot of Argentinian prospects that go to Europe and bounce back. Gio Reina is already there and he's playing mm -hmm. for Borussia Dortmund and I agree he's a very, very good player and his promise is very, very good. I'm going with Gio Reina and there's also another reason I'm going with Gio Reina because he's actually the son of an Argentinian. Claudio, yeah. Reina is an Argentinian. So if it weren't for the uh, cultural uh, affection he has for the U.S., he could be playing for us. Yeah, you would love to have Gio, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. So Thiago Amada, I've watched him quite a bit, actually. I actually even made a video about him a while back. He reminds me a little bit. He's a 10, but he sometimes reminds me of Carlito Steves. That he's aggressive. He, he presses and he goes for that ball until he gets it back. They come from the same place, for Apache. Oh, that's why. He, so I'm not too crazy, right? He reminds of Carlito sometimes, yeah. So point United States. So right now it is 5-4 for Argentina. I also picked Giovanni Reina. I I, um, I like Thiago Amada a lot. And again, Thiago Amada is 20. Gio Reina is 18. And he's already doing it in the Bundesliga very well. So uh, let's go to the next one. That's the left wing. And this one is a little unbalanced, right? This is the one for the United States that's unbalanced. For the left wing, it's Christian Pulisic, Champions League champion. In and out of the Chelsea starting lineup, debatably should be a starter there. Um, been very effective. On the semifinals against Real Madrid, Chelsea scored three goals. He scored one, he got an assist for another one. So he's very effective. Pulisic is our best player right now in our senior squad. Pulisic is our best player in the United States. Debatably, from a technical standpoint, on a player standpoint, not accomplishment, he's the best player we've ever had in the United States. He's better than Donovan from a player standpoint, hasn't accomplished as much as Landon Donovan or Clint Dempsey or Claudio Reyna, uh, but Pulisic is the man for the U.S. men's national team, even though Reyna might have more potential. Right now, Pulisic is our best player. In your pick. Yeah, I'm going with my pick, but first, uh, I I couldn't agree more with you, like on everything you've said about Pulisic. I've been watching football since like intensively I'm a journalist, you know, and, and a content creator and whatever, football is my life. And I've been watching football like very, very hard since 98. And I am always been very, very interested and attracted by US football because I like the progress of new nations. And I've always loved American sports. I've always loved the NBA, the NHL, even like I have teams, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I love the MLS, been watching the MLS since the shirts were weird as hell. And I completely agree with you. I think Pulisic is the best player, the best footballer ever produced by the United States so far. And I think mm -hmm. his potential, he's on the road to become the first football superstar to come from North America. Mm -hmm. So 
I'm starting with the result. I'm picking Pulisic as well. Me too. I already knew I was going to lose this round. I wanted to uh, to make a pick that's more based on style and personal, like, uh, yeah, my, my own personal view. I'm going with Nico Gonzalez. He's a player for Stuttgart. He's uh, the latest addition to our national team, the senior national team, and he's done super, super good. He comes from Argentino Juniors, which is... A, a small team from Buenos Aires mm -hmm. that produces a lot of talent. That's the actual birthplace of Diego Maradona. It's not Boca Juniors, but no. Argentinos Juniors. That's where Juan Román Raquel McKean, Redondo, Cambiaso. So they produce a very like unique type of player. And Nico González has some of that. They also have an American player, Matt Komilhevich, uh, playing there. But Nico Gonzalez, uh, I think it's one to watch out for the next few years, and he will most likely be in the World Cup next year. He's in Stuttgart, right? With Pellegrino Materazzo, the American coach. Yeah. All right, so right now it's actually 5-5. Five, five. Surprisingly, it's 5-5, five, five because if you go back 10 years, Argentina would win 11-0. So. Possibly, yeah. <laughs> Possibly 11, especially when you guys had that generation with them. Um, before even Messi broke out when you had Cambiaso, Ayala, Riquelme, uh, Sorin was still there, I believe. Sorin was yeah. still there. Uh, you had uh, Crespo up top. It would have been 11-0, even though you guys couldn't beat Brazil for your life for some reason. Uh, but all right, center forward. And I'm going to anticipate one thing to the viewers. This one is another unbalanced one. Now this time for Argentina. I'm going to go with the United States. And look, the United States... We don't know who our center forward is right now. We just don't know. We don't know. It's very confusing. So I'm even not going to pick a center forward for this one. I'm just going to say it can be it can be Josh Sargent from Werder Bremen, which is a good center forward, but he hasn't been good for the U.S. So people are starting to question him. I'm questioning him also. It can be Daryl DK that did very well in the championship, but I have a lot of questions in regards to his technical ability. He hasn't been very good with his first touch uh, and a lot of technical deficiencies. It can be Matthew Hoppy that was from Schalke last season, got relegated, did fairly well in the second half of the season. But to me, it doesn't matter who I pick. I'll go with Josh Sargent for the sake of it. It doesn't matter who we pick because I'm just going to say it. His pick is Lataro Martinez. So we're not beating Lataro Martinez right now. But talk a little bit about Lataro Martinez from Inter Milan. What you going to do? I mean, Lautaro Martinez is uh, hes a fantastic player, you know? We see a lot of talent in Argentinian football. We're used to seeing talent and we're always expecting uh, to see talent in the domestic league, to see the new kids, to see how they play, what they can bring. And you tend to pick up on trends. Like you see five games of a certain player and you know, okay, yeah, this player is at a good level. He can do it at River, he can do it at Boca, he can maybe go to the Mexican league, he can go to the MLS, this one can go to a smaller side in Europe, blah, 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 blah. But every now and then, you see a player and you can tell they are completely different to everyone else. Like no one is at the same level in the league, and especially in the age bracket that they are. Uh, it happened with Riquelme when he was a kid. It happened with Aymar, Saviola, Cabenagui. It happened with Carlos Tevez. And Lautaro Martinez was the one that from the first time I saw him, I was like, nah, nah, this guy is too much. I hope he can keep it up. He played for Racing Club in, in Argentina. Racing is one of the historic big clubs, but it's also a team that's very used to suffering. Like, mm -hmm. and they are like the, um, the Red Sox of football, you know? <laughs> uh, no, for real, for real. They had a curse and everything. And Lautaro was one of the best players in the 2018 Copa Libertadores group stage. Yeah. And in the knockout rounds, they were, Racing was going to play against River. We actually played and won, but Lautaro wasn't there anymore. And we were so thankful for that. He had already moved on to Inter Milan. His first season at Inter Milan, he linked up with Romelu Lukaku and the connection was fantastic. So two striker systems are back in my mind, thanks to that. And in his second uh, season at Serie A, again, more of the same inter have won the scudetto cutting uh what nine year uh dominance by juve and it was thanks to conte it was thanks to the team but it was thanks to the goal threat that they had in lautaro and lukaku now yeah. i'm cutting this as short as i can <laughs> lautaro 
who is very, very young. And I wasn't even going to include him because he's not on the Olympic squad for Argentina, basically because he's beyond that. Even though the age uh, warrants him a place, he's beyond the under 23. Lautaro is the number nine for our senior squad. Starting every single game, getting the goals, linking up with Messi, he's the one to get the goals. So that tells you a lot of what kind of player we have. And I also agree with you that if there's one thing that the US haven't got so far, and I'm, I'm talking about this moment in football, it's a true number nine. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the reason I mentioned Sergeant DK Happy all them is because the viewers, maybe I'll pick Sergeant, then someone say, hey, but DK is better. What I'm, my point to everyone is for this video, it doesn't matter if I pick D, it doesn't matter. Lotaro Martinez is an elite striker and soon to be maybe even considered world class very soon. I think he's 23 right now, I believe. Maybe turn 24. Just overall, let's wrap it up right here with Argentina six. United States five. So I think what this tells is it doesn't really tell much about what would happen in the game. That's a completely different story when the teams play, but it just shows more that the United States have come a long way because we should, you go, like I said, you go back 10 years, we can't even make this video. It would have been horrible to make it. It would have been completely horrible, but right now we can at least talk about it. The United States right now is like, okay, the team is not that bad anymore. We're, we're getting, there's a long way to go still. If we want to become one day a title contender in a big competition, like a world cup, we're nowhere near that because even Argentina right now, they're not really a team to win a world cup right now. Even Argentina is not through their best, but yeah, I, I'm very happy that you came along and I got it. Someone that's Argentine, Argentinian to talk about this because I don't want to sound biased and we got your take on it. And you clearly agree that the United States now looks much better than ever in regards to prospects. Completely, completely. Uh, it was my pleasure to be here. Uh, the exercise alone of making a team, you know, being a full manager player, ma making a team, making a squad and thinking about players and, you know, filtering out options and whatever is one of the things I like most. Uh, and I think the takeaway that the US is up to the challenge right now and are possibly enjoying one of the greatest uh, generations in terms of talent and potential, I couldn't agree more. Uh, I'm, um, you know, in South America in general, uh, uh, and especially, I don't know, 10 years ago, we wouldn't rate the MLS or the, the US team that much, you know? But I think people are coming along and coming to terms with the reality. The MLS has a long way to, to go and grow as a league, but the American talent that's being bred in Europe that's the key and you guys are doing a terrific yeah and, and mexico also thought the same and we just destroyed them they thought we weren't as good and we just beat them in nations league so mexico can can deal with that too and you but, know that phrase that the the enemy of my enemy is my friend we we hate mexico Football. nobody likes mexico i tell everyone in south america nobody likes mexico but look this is off topic here in the video i'm gonna wrap up the video here Thank you once again here. Thank you, everyone. Guys, make sure to hit the like button, all that, and check out Fede on Twitter and on YouTube. I'm going to put everything on the description down below. Thank you for watching, guys. Have a great day.